to Australia now, where lawmakers have approved a world-first law banning under 16-year-olds from using social media. Once introduced, the new legislation could see tech companies like TikTok, Facebook and Instagram fined up to 50 million Australian dollars. That's almost 31 million euros if they fail to comply. They've been given one year to work out how to implement the ban. Now, the approval from Australia's Senate today followed a fierce debate in the country with critics claiming the new law has been rushed out and could push children towards the dark web. Take a listen. Uh, we have heard the cries of families who are suffering and um, we cannot continue to allow this to happen any longer. This bill is so weak, is such a veneer. It's to make old people, oldies, adults, feel like they've done something. It's a false sense of security. It's impossible, and we accept this, for governments to completely stop young people from accessing harmful products or content. But we can help. We can help by asking the social media companies to play their role. And we can now talk to Angela Vopier. She's the national technology reporter for Australia's national broadcaster, ABC. Welcome to the day, And Now, this is going to be the world's harshest social media legislation. How do people in Australia feel about it? It really depends who you ask, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, you ask a lot of young people, uh, and I'm using that term pretty broadly, you know, people under 30, they're more likely to be critical of this bill. Um, but then, you know, you look at parents, you ask parents and, uh, you know, th this law really is pitched at them, it's for them. Um, and they have a very strong sense that something needs to be done here. Uh, in the Senate, I mean, you can see some of how that division has played out. The fact that you've got, um, you know, members of their own party, you know, uh, sorry, you've got uh, party members crossing the floor to vote against the position of their own party on this. Uh, so it really has, um, it really has split the room, so to speak. But uh, it, you know, it, not not so divisive that it didn't get through. Mm -hmm. It looks like. There will be some exemptions, though. What's the reasoning behind that? Yes. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, consultation, or well, some consultation anyway, done in the run-up to uh, the drafting of this legislation. And uh, really what the government says it's trying to do here is avoid capturing educational platforms or uh, health platforms, you know, the kinds of apps that are have a, have a narrow use but will essentially... That, that will, and will essentially help teenagers. Uh, there is also another function to this exemption system that we are yet to get the full date, detail of, but they want th to essentially provide a good incentive for platforms to improve safety and and not be banned for under 16s. So whether or not that happens for any of the key platforms, any of the very famous ones that we love to talk about, you know, Snapchat, Instagram, uh, Facebook and, and TikTok it remains to be seen. And I imagine it would be quite a high bar that they had to clear, but we, we, we don't have the details yet of what they would even need to do in order to achieve an exemption. So this is some of what the criticism was when it came to passing this bill um, from all quarters, it's people saying, well, we don't have enough detail um, and this is all happening very, very quickly. Critics are also saying that this law was rushed. Why the urgency, you think? Well, two main reasons. Um, that bill was one of 30-something bills that was passed yesterday. It was the last day that the Australian Parliament was to sit this in it, this year. They won't be back until 2025, and 2025 is an election year in Australia, so there was a strong, uh, a strong wish to, to get something over the line, to get this specific bill over the line for the, for the Labor government. Um, there is a much bigger... Uh, reform piece at play when it comes to online safety. The main online safety law that we have here is being re reviewed and, and restyled somewhat in the style of um, uh, the EU's Digital Services Act, in fact, um, but that is a much slower uh, process, as you can imagine. It's, it's a large reform. It's hard to say if that would get through in time 
for the election. And this gives the government something to point to and say, here is action. Um, we know that you, the community, are concerned about this, particularly parents, and that you're anxious, maybe even desperate. Um, here's what we've done. Yeah, but there are still big questions about the implementation of the law. Let's listen to an industry spokesperson from Australia and then get back to you. There are fundamental questions that haven't been answered. What's the technical basis of this? What's the scope? How are we going to manage the unintended safety risks that this will pose to young people who may be pushed to darker, less safe parts of the internet in their attempts to get online? Now, she does have some legitimate questions there, doesn't she? How do authorities plan to go about implementing this ban? Yeah, uh, they're not saying, and in fairness to the bill, uh, it was never designed to to be prescriptive in that respect. Um, it is, it, it deliberately leaves a blank space where, it, you know, you would be otherwise be prescriptive about the technological means for implementing a ban. Um, it says very clearly, well, this will be down to, this will be down to platforms to, to work it out. Uh, of course, the rebuttal to that is that, where this has been asked of platforms in other jurisdictions, it hasn't been possible or or there have been other challenges, of course, the, the key challenge being privacy in that um, really the only ironclad way to verify age uh, online is to take someone's government-issued ID, mm -hmm. and that does create a privacy risk. And, you know, what is often forgotten in, in this debate um, is that you're not just asking young people to do that, um, you're asking everyone who wants to visit the websites that we're talking right. about to do that. So, yeah, so it, it's it's a huge privacy risk um, or, potent, you know, has the potential to be an enormous privacy risk, um, and that's something that... Yeah, that, that's that's something that's complicating the the methodology question as well. That's tech journalist Angelo Pierre. Many thanks.